Have you ever seen a one terabyte M.2 SSD that's this small? I mean, I know I haven't, and it's actually even as fast as a full-size WD-SN500, which is actually pretty impressive. Technically speaking, it is a standard 2230 drive, and actually, thinking about it, Western Digital or WD do offer the, uh, the sort of enterprise version of this drive, which is the SN530, in a 2230 format. So, I guess this thing isn't quite as special as I thought? Wait, hold on a sec. Is that a single chip? It is. Huh. Let's take a quick look at the WD drive again for reference. You can see that up at the top, there really aren't that many components, pretty much two main chips. The smaller one is the storage controller, SSD controller, and the larger one is the NAND flash, the stuff that actually stores all of your data. Some drives will also have a third chip in this arrangement, which is a DRAM cache, which is actually pretty important for uh, effectively fast and smooth real-world operation, but uh, these WD drives don't have one. So how can Keoxia have just a single chip when everyone else needs at least two? Well, here's the thing. Keoxia, also known as Toshiba, well, they're one of the few manufacturers of NAND flash in the entire world. And because they actually manufacture the stuff, they have a, a bit of an edge in being able to design and build really funky and innovative products like this one. See, built into this single chip is both the controller and the NAND flash. Now, it doesn't have any DRAM, although I'll talk more about that in a second, but on the whole, this is a pretty impressive device. The BG4, which is the one I have here, is the fourth generation of their ball grid array chips, hence why it's called BG, and uh, these, uh, the controller in here runs at, uh, or supports NVMe 1.3b, runs at PCIe Gen 3 by 4 through the M.2 M key connector, on the top, and the NAND flash is 96 layer of their own Bix flash, uh, which is a TLC or 3-bit per cell uh, flash, although it does have what seems to be around 32 gigabytes of SLC or single, uh, single bit cache, which is generally a lot faster to write to, whereas the TLC is a lot more write endurant, but often a bit slower. Now, I mentioned that these drives don't have a DRAM cache or any DRAM on board. That's kind of important as, at least on normal drives, well, if you don't have any DRAM, you often have degraded real world performance. That's because the controller has to use what's called a lookup table to go and find where it stored your information that you're requesting or where there is free space in the NAND flash to write that data to. Generally, or at least if you don't have a DRAM cache, that lookup table is exclusively stored in the NAND flash itself. And that's a problem because reading and writing to the NAND flash is a lot slower, at least in terms of latency, than reading and writing from DRAM or RAM. Now, happily, Keoxia have thought of that, and they've enabled a feature that was first introduced in NVMe 1.2 called Host Memory Buffer. Essentially, what that does is, instead of using DRAM cache on board the drive itself, which in our case doesn't exist, it copies that lookup table into the system memory and that allows it to act a lot faster and have generally better latency than reading from the NAND itself. It's still not perfect, and having DRAM on board is still going to be a, an overall better experience, but it does offer, at least for the right workloads, an overall better usage experience for anyone using one of these drives. Now, I've talked about their specs for a fair while, but let's take a look at their performance results. Starting with the, the synthetic tests, uh, Crystal Dismark, as always, shows the, the highest numbers possible, and in that test, it didn't report quite as high as Keoxia's, let's say, marketing numbers 
would suggest. It ran around about 1.8 gigabytes per second in reads and about 1.3 gigabytes per second in writes, which is still fantastic and plenty for this style of drive, especially something this insanely small. I should also mention I'm testing with a Ryzen 5600X on an AMD or an ASRock B550 Steel Legend motherboard. Taking a look at AS SSD, it offers a more, let's say, bleak view of the sequential write performance, around one gigabyte per second, although the reads are better, around 1.6. If you compare to the WDSN 500 that I've tested previously, which also isn't technically the most recent version of that drive, the 550 or even the 530 are a bit newer, but either way, with the data I have, uh, comparing the two, the, S uh, the BG4 is actually slightly faster in the 4K and 4K 64 thread reads, although uh, it does struggle more by comparison in those writes. In ATTO, it offers one of the, the lower end performance runs that I've had from an M.2 drive, although it still actually kind of ties with the SN500 in reads, although it is a little bit lower on the writes, pretty much across the board with a couple of points where they slightly cross over. In a straight file transfer, copying relatively large files, around 100 gigabytes for the total data set, it averages around about uh, a gigabyte per second towards the start of the, the, the transfer, which is actually pretty decent. Now, when it fills up its SLC cache, it does slow down to more like 650 megabytes per second, although that's still definitely not too bad from a straight file transfer uh, from a PCIe Gen 3 uh, full fat or high speed SSD. And finally, my usual stress test of duplicating that same uh, fairly large 100 gigabyte data set uh, on the drive to stress the controller's read and write capabilities, that was actually a lot more, I suppose, volatile than I'm used to seeing. It bounced pretty consistently between around 300 megabytes per second and about 500, 550. It's still not too bad in, in its performance, although on that lower end, that is pretty close to a sort of standard or a high performance SATA SSD. But there's kind of a key difference there. It's this small. Like, that's a pretty uh, impressive achievement for what is literally one chip on the smallest PCB it can fit on, and that's definitely not bad. The other thing to consider is that this isn't really a, a consumer drive, or more specifically, this isn't a drive that is designed for you, the end user, to just go and pick up and use in your, your gaming PC, your laptop, whatever else. You certainly can, but these are definitely a price premium if you're not buying, well, literally a pallet load. That's who these are designed for. They're designed for uh, laptop manufacturers who are building thousands upon thousands of, of Ultrabooks that they need the, the smallest possible drive to fit in, and they're going to be buying tens of thousands of these to put in those machines. And the fact that this is just a single package on a PCB is actually kind of the key to what the, the unique selling point of this drive is, which is Kyocera will actually sell you that chip on its own for you to go and solder to your you know, laptop PCB. That does mean that more devices may end up having unremovable SSDs, which is a bit of a pain, but if it means that you can now get one terabyte of storage in a single little package and have that in the thinnest and lightest machines, well, that sounds like a benefit to me. I mean, this could, uh, this is small enough and actually is power efficient enough that this could reasonably be put into tablets and even phones without too much consideration for, you know, things like thermal management, whereas a more standard controller for an SSD and NAND flash generally wouldn't fit in that sort of, uh, that sort of use case. In fact, even as an M.2 drive, you could make the argument that even for something like a gaming laptop, having one of these drives 
in your system, or maybe even two in RAID 0 for a bit better performance, well, that is still going to be uh, take up less space inside the machine than just a single standard 2280 drive. And without the, those 2280 slots, you could make the argument that you could put a larger battery or bigger heat sinks without having to expand the frame at all. There are also some other nice benefits to having a drive that's this insanely small. Uh, like Wendell mentioned in his video on the Level 1 Text channel while playing with these, that a number of cameras already use uh, a PCIe-based SSD, but that are in a sort of proprietary form factor and end up costing an insane amount of money. So you could reasonably pick one of these up, put it in a, a little enclosure or a little adapter that maybe even just fits in the standard, you know, casing for that drive, and you get potentially more capacity with potentially even faster speeds and for less money. That seems like a, a pretty win-win to me. So should you buy a BG4? Well, if you're only going to be putting it in your desktop motherboard or your gaming laptop that already supports standard 2280 drives, then no. There's no point in buying this beyond, beyond novelty as you can buy standard 2280 drives that are faster, more data dense in terms of just having more physical storage, that have DRAM caches and so offer generally better performance, and that are cheaper than this that will still work in your system just fine. But if you're a, a laptop designer or someone who's designing uh, an embedded device that needs a, a fair bit of fast storage, but you don't have all that much space to do it, then yeah, I think you should take a look at this and see if you can incorporate it. And even from a, a larger perspective, if you're still designing mobile devices that uh, still have some level of space constraint internally, like even like gaming laptops or even just something like high-end consumer laptops, I still think you could benefit from putting these in instead of standard 2280 drives. Personally, I really like this as it has some very unique use cases compared to the, the standard form factor, and that just feels cool to me. Uh, with that said, those are my thoughts, and I would love to hear yours in the comments down below. What do you think of the BG4? Is this a, a drive you'd pick up yourself, or are you a laptop or embedded system designer that is now going to take a look at these? Feel free to let me know in the comments down below. If you want to check out the BG4, I'll leave a link to both their websites and an Amazon affiliate link in the description for you to check out. I can't guarantee you'll be able to find or purchase uh, it on Amazon, as like I said, they're a little bit more niche or a little bit more sort of uh, sold in volume rather than in the individual, but I'll leave it down there for you to check out. Uh, just to make it clear, since I've kind of been raving about this, uh, this video isn't sponsored by Keoxia. They did provide the drives, but uh, it's not you know properly sponsored. They're not paying me. They didn't uh, give me any talking points to mention. Um, but that's me and the drive. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments down below. If you want to see more videos like this one on a Monday, Wednesday, Friday basis, then do hit that subscribe button, turn the, the bell notification icon, and there are a load of other links in the description you can check out, including ways to support the channel for hoodies or t-shirts like this one. You can support directly through the YouTube join button or through uh, Patreon, whichever you'd prefer, if either, I suppose. Uh, or there's affiliate links to places like Overclock UK if you're buying from there, Humble Bundle, Streamlabs, OBS, VPN options, and a whole lot of other stuff. So do feel free to check it out. I'll leave some more videos on the end cards if you want to keep watching. And uh, yeah, Otherwise, thank you for watching, and we'll see you on the next video.